Hey guys, Mateus here. Today we're going to go over the Demon Hunter Unhallowed Essence build. First I will show you skills needed for this build. Uh, in our primary slot we're going to be using Evasive Fire Focus as our Hatred Generator. So, uh, the Focus Rune is the quickest way to generate Hatred for the Demon Hunter and we need that to um, <coughs> generate Hatred for the Multi-Shot Arsenal which is our damage dealer for the build. Arsenal turns multi-shot into fire damage. It also also shoots multiple homing rockets with each attack. For our action bar skills, we will be using Vault with either the Tumble Rune or uh, Trail of Cinders Rune. Both are good. It's a good way to get out of danger. Um, quick escape route and so on. And it uh, costs not much discipline to use which uh, I will show you later is important. Then we'll use Companion, Wolf Companion, just a little damage uh, buff for the build. We'll be using Caltrops, Bait the Trap. The reason we use this is because it uh, another damage increase. If you're in the trap, you will get a gain to critical hit chance while standing inside the trap. Also could use for crowd control and proccing one of the gems that we'll be using. Most importantly, we'll be using Preparation Invigoration. We won't be actively using it, but because of the Invigoration, we will permanently increase maximum discipline, which is crucial for this build, because that is a multiplier for our damage. Passive Skills. We're going to use Ballistics. Increases rocket damage by 100%. Also, a 20% chance to shoot a homing rocket for 150 weapon damage. That's because our multi-shot arsenal rune now shoots rockets as well as arrows, so you'll be getting a damage buff from that. Ambush, 40% additional damage for against enemies above 75% health. This is a good complementary skill to Dead Man's Legacy Quiver, which we'll be using. So this will do increased damage at the beginning of the attack, while Dead Man's Quiver will do increased damage towards the end of the attack with when the enemy hits 50 to 60 percent health. I'll show you how that works later. Awareness, pretty important for this build considering that Demon Hunter is pretty weak, pretty soft when it comes to survivability. Awareness is like an insurance so if you do get fatal damage you won't die the first time. You uh, disappear or vanish for two seconds, regenerate 50 percent of maxim maximum life and this occurs once every 60 seconds. Call the weak will be the fourth passive we use. Uh, increased damage against slowed or chilled enemies by 20%. With this build, show that most of our enemies will be slowed or chilled the majority of the time. So it's basically a 20% buff across the board. Gear. This is the Unhallowed Essence set. As you can see, the two-piece set bonus will make your generator also also generate discipline as well as hatred and this is important because our like I said our discipline will be our multiplier for damage as you can see in the six set bonus your generators and multi shot deal 15% increased damage for every point of discipline you have that means the more discipline you have the more damage you do it's very important to maximize the amount of discipline that you could have I'll show you later how to do that <clears throat> So our Curse Vices will be our helm. Stats that you're going to be looking for in this is Dexterity, Critical Hit Chance are the two most important ones. For survivability, you could have Vitality or Leech on Hit. Also, if, if you want increased damage, uh, you could do Multi-Shot 15% damage increase. Shoulders. Going to be having uh, Dexterity, Vitality important, Resist All is important. Reduce all resource costs is important because we want to be spamming multi shot as much as possible, so we want to reduce the resource cost for that. You could also have increased area damage, which is very good damage bonus for this build instead of resist all or instead of the vitality. <clears throat> Gloves. Again, dexterity. Two most important ones here are crit hit chance, crit hit damage. Um, you could add resist all or vitality or reduce resource costs or attack speed, whatever you think is best. For the torso, 
same thing, you're going to want dexterity, vitality, and resist all, but most importantly is that secondary stat of plus 12 maximum discipline. Because remember, every point of discipline we have increases our damage by 15%. On holy plates, we're going to be using this pants. Same thing, dexterity, vitality, either armor or resist all. Or you could actually do evasive fire damage increase if you want a little bit more power in your generator. Uh, secondary here, I actually have life after each kill. The reason I have that is because I use the leech passive, which is in my amulet. That leech passive gives you life on hit as a passive, but it also uses the amount of life on kill you have as a percentage of that life on hit. So you get increased life on hit, so increased survivability for all the life on kill you have in your armor. Um, while we're here, the ami, I use the Hellfire amulet because of that, because it gives you an extra passive, which is nice. Not necessary for the build. If you have a really nice roll for another amulet, that's fine. Uh, for the ami, you're looking for crit hit chance and crit hit damage. So those are the two most important things. You can either go with dexterity or um, increased fire damage, which will help. Boots, going to be using the Hellwalkers. Most important here is that multi-shot damage increase. Obviously, you want dexterity and vitality. The fourth one, you could go with either, like, regenerate what I have. It wouldn't be my first choice. I would want all resist, actually. This was a perfect pair of boots. Um, you could use in increased movement speed if you're low paragon level. I'd avoid that and just use a paragon points to max that out if you could. Um, for our weapon, we want to do Yang's Recurve. This is necessary for the build for two reasons. It makes multi-shot attack 50% faster, which basically gives you just a straight 50% buff on your attack speed. And it reduces all resource costs by 48%, which is crucial for this build so you can spam multi-shot. Um, secondly, and also equally important, is that plus 12 maximum discipline. Like I've been saying, need that plus 12 maximum discipline to maximize the damage you can do. As far as the rest of the stats, you just want to get as high DPS as possible. Dead Man's Legacy is what we'll be using as Quiver, also necessary for the build, because multi-shot multi hits enemies below, in my case, 56% health twice. Reason that's important, and reason it's complementary with Ambush, is it's basically a damage buff for the entire enemies that you're using. I think it was 75% or 74% that uh, the Ambush uses against. And uh, so there's a small gap there that it will be doing regular damage. All the other times it will be doing increased damage. This Dead Man's Legacy is basically as good as you could get. Almost as good as you could get. Obviously, I would like that critical hit chance increased by 10 by 10% 10 instead of 8.5. And I would like it to be ancient, but these are all the stats you want on your quiver. You want dexterity, attack speed increase, critical hit chance, Reduce all resource costs, increase multi-shot damage, and plus 12 maximum discipline. I can't think of one of these that I would replace. <clears throat> Belt. I use the Hunter's Wrath. It's very good for this build. Reason being is because it makes your primary skills attack 30% faster and deal 50% increased damage. The important thing here is the 30% faster is because it allows you to generate that much more hatred in a shorter amount of time. Stats, you could use Dexterity Vitality, Increase Evasive Fire Damage by 15%, or Percent Life, Armor, All Resistance, they're all good. Another option for the belt is the Witching Hour, if you want straight up DPS boost. That will do a lot more damage, but is a slower generator and generally not as uh, defensively strong. <coughs> for our wrists, we will be using Wraps of Clarity. Because the Demon Hunter is weak and soft, uh, this allows us to have damage reduction in place. It makes your hatred generators, every time you use it, reduce your damage taken by 34% for 5 seconds. So that's basically, we're, the way we're going to run this build is every 5 seconds we'll be using our hatred generator. Whether to keep this buff up, keep our rings buff up, which I'll show you in a little bit, or to generate hatred so 
we're basically going to be having at all times a 34 34% damage reduction with this item equipped. Uh, as far as stats, fire skills deal 200% more damage is crucial. Critical hit chance increased by 6% is, cru is crucial. The dexterity is crucial. For the fourth one, you could do life per hit, vitality, all resist, whatever you feel like doing. As far as rings go, we will be using focus and restraint. This is the strongest ring set for this build, for most builds actually. Um, every time you s use a resource generating attack, uh, you deal 50% increased damage for five seconds and when you use a resource spending attack you deal 50 percent increased damage for five seconds so by alternating those two you'll be doing 100 percent increased damage and the damage buff is very important and hard to beat as far as stats go dexterity critical hit chance critical hit damage all important as you can see with this other one basically the same thing now gems bane of the trap is the most important for this build because almost everything we're going to be using procs it increased damage against enemies under the effects of controlled and pairing effects that is a very strong damage buff and it also comes with an aura that reduces the movement speed of enemies within 15 yards by 30 percent so it procs itself the second uh, ge legendary demo gem we're going to use is uh, Zai Stone of, of Vengeance because multi shot has such a long range this uh, gem works out really well because you could hit targets basically off screen and it's going to increase your damage by s in my case 6.9% for every 10 yards between you and my enemy or you and the enemy and the maximum for th is 34.5% Five percent increase at 50 yards. You'll be he hitting plenty of uh, enemies at 50 yards. Very important also is a 20% chance on hit to stun the enemy for one second. So that's would proc Bane of the Trap in and of itself. Third gem is up to debate. I've been using Bane of the Powerful recently, basically because with this build you're killing things pretty quickly, and you're gonna always have 20% uh, increased damage after killing an elite pack. So that's good. That buff is basically going to be on the entire run. So it's for all intents and purposes, 20% increased damage across the board, plus that increased damage against at least by 50% right there. You could also use um, Band of the Stricken for Ubers and tougher greater rifts, which increases damage every time you hit an opponent so if you're if it's a strong opponent and you have to hit it multiple times it's going to keep increasing the damage hit tie guck people use too but that's hard to keep up less fun to play i i'd rather just do bane of the powerful uh gems in your gear just going to go straight emerald get that dexterity boost and i like to go with uh, the amethyst in the helm for that extra life just to give you a little bit more toughness in the knives cube like to use calamity that the mark for death uh, tribute for that gives you a lot of extra damage it's really hard to beat with any other cubed weapon if you don't have calamity it's kind of hard to find I like to use hell rack which roots enemies to the ground or has a chance to root them to the ground and that'll proc your bane of the trap gem cinder coat is very important for this build gives you 30% reduced fire skills or re re reduces the resource cost of fire skills by 30%. Since our main resource spender is a fire skill, it's going to reduce that by 30% and allow us to, uh, to spam that as much as possible. If you don't have Cinder Coat, another option is Pride's Fall. And it also reduces your any resource cost by 30%, but after you're, that's only after not taking damage for five seconds. So as soon as you take damage, that's that goes out the window. So Syndicate is definitely a way to go. For your jewelry cubed spot, conventions of elements is hard to beat. You get 20% increased damage to a single element, and it rotates through all the elements uh, for four seconds. So whenever it's on fire, 
you will be doing 200% increased damage to that multi-shot, which is a huge increase. Really hard to beat that. Um, if you want to go a little bit more def the defensive route and uh, you're soloing, unity is very important. That will reduce your damage by half if you have, it equi have one equipped to your follower and also have your follower with a relic that does not allow them to die. That, uh, that definitely boosts survivability, survivability by a lot. Another option, but it's the hardest item to find in the game, is the Star of Azkaranth. I've been playing for over a thousand hours and only found one of them. And what this does is prevents all fire damage taken and heals yourself for 15% with the amount prevented. The reason this is good for the build is because your damage dealer, your multi-shot, is fire damage. And you're dealing a lot of damage. So if you come across a reflect damage elite pack or champion pack, you will have a tough time surviving that. This basically nullifies any of the reflect damage that you may come across, so you don't have to worry about that anymore. Follower. I use the Templar. just seems right with the build. It helps with survivability. Skill-wise, I'm going to go with Heal. No, just to Heal. Then we have Intimidate. Enemies that hit or are hit by the Templar are slowed. So that's going to proc our Bane of the Trapped when this happens. Charge will also do the same thing. We'll proc the Bane of the Trapped. And this is just um, Guardian, which will give you a little bit more insurance and heal you when you're low on life. For our Relic, we're going to do a Your Follower Cannot Die Relic. That's pretty important, just so they're up and running. And if you're using Unity, it's a, it's a must. But it definitely helps and allows them to keep, keep being in the fight if they can't die. For Weapon, I like to go with Thunder Fury, mainly because it... Um, chance on hit it blasts the enemy with lightning damage and the reason we like that is because each enemy hit has their attack speed and it must be reduced by 30 percent for three seconds and jumps up to five targets so right there that that procs bane of the trapped which will help us in this build and i pair that with word ward which coupled it uses the lightning damage and has a 29 percent chance to stun for 1.5 seconds so again procs bane of the trapped for the amiel, I use the S of Johan for the same reason. Chance on hit to pull in enemies towards your target and slow them by 60%, which procs Bane of the Trapped. Again, freeze of deflection. Blocking an attack has a chance to freeze them at the attack for 1.4 seconds. Again, procs Bane of the Trapped. And I have a unity on it, even though I'm not using it right now, just because I'm too lazy to change it. But uh, Justin Lancer, Justice Lancer will work too because it increases uh, block percentage. So the better chance of blocking, which will proc this. And um, skill-wise, we want to use uh, get as many reduced cooldowns of all skills as we can on these things, so they can use it. So our follower can use the skills more often. Uh, I think that's it with uh, the build. Now I could show you a quick T Torment 10 Nephilim Rift run. Show you how the build works. Basically what we're going to be doing here is alternating between your generator and your spender. So evasive fire, evasive fire and multi-shot. As you can see, cuts through enemies pretty quickly on Torment 10. I mean, I have good gear, but uh, the build itself is pretty impressive. I generally get in the habit of um, using my caltrop whenever I'm about to attack, so I'm automatically standing on it, which raises my critical hit chance. You could use vault as needed. Don't want to get too over jealous, overzealous with it, even though. It is low discipline cost. You can get carried away, and we want to keep that discipline up as high as possible because that is our that's where our increased damage comes from. Another reason you want to switch between evasive fire and multi-shot is to keep the keep the ring buff up. 
which is pretty easy to keep up, to be honest. You know, you just one in the two, and it's buffed up. Don't got to be running around doing it all the time. And also, when you hit that evasive fire, it uh, puts the rapid clarity rapid clarity buff up, which will help in defense. Uh, Torment 10, not really worried about dying. I mean, you can die if you're careless. Mostly you got to worry about the one-shot kills, either explosions or charging bulls. But uh, those are the only two things. And plus, we have awareness. So, you know, if we lose focus for a little bit and die, we have we have awareness. We have a fail-safe that will give us 50% life and give us a second chance. But as you can see, you can run through these things pretty quick. Oops, see. Almost died right there. Awareness. haven't even used my wolf companion yet. Uh, the thing with this build is great for speed farming. But it is a little soft when you get up to higher greater rips. Torment 10, you know, is fine. But once you get to you know, high 50, low 60 level greater rips, you got to be a little bit more careful about dying. It's a little harder. So if you want to get the top of the leaderboard, maybe this isn't the build for you. But, but for speed farming, it's hard to beat. It's also a fun build to play. It doesn't take that much skill to use. Just going back and forth, avoiding damage, kiting a little bit. So I'm running this rift pretty slow, actually. I usually run them around three minutes. Usually takes me. Which is a pretty good pace. I don't know if we'll break the two-minute mark with this build. There's too many stop and shoots. So it might be tough to break the three-minute mark. But uh, cuts through these enemies pretty quickly. Maybe I shouldn't have got that power pylon so I could show you how to take down this, uh, how fast I could take down a Rift Guardian without the bonus. Maybe I'll wear off by the time I face him. There, I'll let it wear off just so you can see how fast it goes down. As you can see, it takes them down pretty quickly. Especially when that conventional elements is on fire, which I don't even know if it was or not. But uh, that's basically it with this build. It's a fun build to play. Uh, this is patch 2.3, season 4. 
but I know season five is coming out soon. But this, there's no reason why this build won't be viable for that season as well. Like I said, it's not a high grade or rift build to play. I mean, there's there's plenty of builds for the barbarian and and uh, the monk that are better for high GRs. But this is my favorite speed farming build, funnest to play. So if you have any questions, please uh, leave them in the comment sections. And thank you for watching. Until next time.